dry fly fishing. One of the most exciting ways to fish where the fly is sitting on the surface of the water and the fish come up and take it. Now we've got a couple of selections here. We've got the clink hammers. Now these sit quite low in the surface and it's like an emerging insect. Another one we've got is the mayfly pattern. Now these are fantastic flies because the fish will come, crash on them, drown them, and then come back and take the fly. But what I'm gonna to use today is the good old hopper. Now, big hackle, nice legs on it, looks exactly like an insect. We've got different colors, but my favorite, the Bibio hopper. It's black and red. Now to tie this on, what we're gonna do is use a blood knot. And a very simple way to do this is Feed the nylon through the eye, get hold of the end, create a V, and then spin the fly six times. When you go all the way down, keep the tension. It's easier to feed it back through. And once it's back through there, hold the end, pull it down, and just before it beds down, a little bit of spit, moisten it, pull it down, and that's neat on the eye. Trim the end off. Now this fly, because it's got a hackle underneath, will sit quite high on the surface. When you're fishing this, if you find that the fish are turning underneath and not taking it, what you can do is cut the hackles underneath, it'll sit a little bit lower, and you'll turn those takes into really confident fish taking your fly. Now, just before we go fishing, a couple of things you have to do. First of all, gink or floatant. Put a little bit on your finger, and then just Put it on the hackle. You don't want to drown the fly. And then leave that part to dry. Then get rid of every bit of gink that's on your finger. And then just before, what we're gonna do, this fluorocarbon or nylon, if you use it, will actually sit on the surface of the water. So we get full as earth, lead a sink. What do you get? A little bit in your finger. And then what we do is we just pull all this nylon or fluorocarbon through our fingers, all the way down to the fly. Make sure you don't put it on the fly at all. There we go, that's enough. Right, the fly's ready, just make sure it's dried out. The leader's ready, let's get on the water and have a go. When you first approach the water, just take your time Look around to see if you can see any fish moving at all. If there's not, well, don't think that you've got to cast to the other side of the lake. Just work the water that's close to you because there'll be a lot of fish cruising around the margins. And just get a little bit of line off and cast it out. Now, at the moment, there's not a lot of wind on the lake at all. And the problem with that is there's a lot of surface tension on the water. And what you're going to find is the fly will sit proud on the surface, but the nylon or the fluorocarbon will also do that. So to eliminate that, what you actually do is straighten it, give it a quick pull. That actually, the nylon cuts the surface tension, that will sink, then the fly will sit proud. Now importantly, when you're fishing this, if there is any wind, you must make sure that the fly has no drag on it at all. So if the wind's going behind you, what you have to do is actually, when you cast out, stop the rod high and then drop it down. And that will put a few slack loops in the line that will enable the fly to fish away from you. So <clears throat> then the fluorocarbon, as I'm using, what that will do after a while, because it's one and a half times heavier than nylon, it'll pull the fly down. Now, a lot of fishermen, what they'll do is they'll rip it off, then they'll cast it a few times, few false casts to dry the fly, then put it back down. I never do that because with a dry fly, although you're fishing on the surface, once the fluorocarbon has pulled it down, then actually fish it back wet. So you're fishing it subsurface. And if you think about it, natural insects drown. So if your fly sinks, fish it back. You never know, they might not want it right on the surface. They might want it just in or just below. So that could be the trigger to actually getting a take. But when you're fishing as well, maximize the water in front of you to so work all the way around. Remembering, once you've cast out, that long pull, just to cut the surface tension, let that fly fish as natural as possible. Don't move it. If you see some Vs behind it, that means you're dragging in. Don't think you've got to retrieve because that fly is just sitting there. You're setting an ambush. And if you see a fish rise, then what you do is don't cast at the fish. If you see it's going from your right to your left, put it two, three yards to the left of that fish, set an ambush, put the fly out there, give it a quick pull. The nylon will cut through 
that fly will sit proud and then wait for that big mouth to come and engulf your fly.